welcome back to another episode of the Midweek Refill. I'm Bishop A. Reginald Midler. There is no pain like the pain of betrayal. But you know what? There's healing and blessings after the betrayal. In this episode of the Midweek Refill, we're going to talk about lessons from betrayal. Be sure to like, share, subscribe. Also, check the links in the description box below for a free PDF teaching handout that goes along with this teaching. You know, when it comes to betrayal, few things cut deeper than the sting of being betrayed by someone you trust. Whether it's a friend, a family member, or someone you've given your confidence to. Betrayal can leave a lasting scar. Well, throughout the scriptures, we find that betrayal isn't unique to our day and time. In fact, it's really a part of the human experience. Betrayal is as old as the Bible itself. From David to Jesus and from Joseph to Paul, we see faithful people facing betrayal. Their stories give us guidance on how to respond, how to heal, and how to see God's hand even in the darkest of moments. In this study, we're going to dive into the lessons that we can learn from betrayal, looking to God's word for direction, comfort, and insight. And here's lesson number one. Betrayal often comes from those who are close to us. Now, one of the hardest aspects of betrayal is that it often comes from someone we trust deeply. King David knew this type of pain all too well. He lamented in Psalm 41 verse 9. He says, even my close friend, someone I trusted, one who shared my bread has turned against me. Similarly, Jesus was betrayed by one of the 12 disciples, Judas, who had walked with him for three and a half years. Witnessing miracles and intimate moments, Judas ultimately betrayed Jesus for 30 pieces of silver. Psalm 41, verse number nine, where David says, even my close friend, someone I trusted, one who shared my bread is turned against me. That is archived for our benefit. Even Matthew 26 and 14 through 16, then one of the 12, the one called Judas Iscariot, went to the chief priest and asked, what are you willing to give me if I deliver him, referring to Jesus, over to you? So they counted out for him 30 pieces of silver. From then on, the Bible says Judas watched for an opportunity to hand him over. Betrayal from someone who is close can hurt more than anything in the world. But Jesus and David both show us, while betrayal stings, God's love and presence remains constant even in our pain. Here's the second lesson about betrayal. Betrayal is often driven by self-interest. Betrayal is often motivated by a person's self-interest, jealousy, and sometimes even greed. You know, Judas's betrayal of Jesus was driven by financial gain, and he also sought out the 30 pieces of silver as well. Similarly, Joseph was betrayed by his own brothers who sold him into slavery over jealousy. They resented Joseph because of he was favored by his father. God had given them the ability to dream and interpret dreams, and they wanted to remove Joseph and his dreams from their lives. You know, I love Genesis 37. It says, so when Joseph came to his brothers, they stripped him of his robe, the ornate robe he was wearing, and they took him and threw him into the cistern. They sold him for 20 shekels of silver, to the Ishmaelites who took him to Egypt. The root of betrayal is often selfishness and envy. And when we see betrayal around us, it is essential to remember that these actions stem from a heart that is turned away from God's ways. But we can learn to respond with grace rather than with bitterness. Thirdly, God is present in the pain of betrayal. God is present. Even in your darkest moments of betrayal, God is at work. Joseph's story is a powerful example of that truth. 
Because after being sold by his brothers, Joseph eventually rose to power in Egypt and was able to save many lives, check this out, including his own family. And he says to them, what you meant for evil against me, God meant it for my good. Joseph knew that their intents were to kill him, to destroy him, to get rid of him, to be rid of his presence. But he also knew that the God of Genesis 37, where he gave him the dream, is also the God of Genesis 50, who had a plan bigger than their plot. So when we are betrayed, it can feel like our world is falling apart. Yet, just as God worked through Joseph's pain to fulfill his greater purpose, guess what? He is present in our pain and he will work all things for good. Romans 8 and 28 says, and we know that all things work together for good to those who are called according to his purpose, those that love the Lord. If you love God, and I believe you do, everything in your life is designed for your development and not your detriment. Yes, even betrayal. So friends, here's what I want to do. I want to give you this free PDF. It's right down there in the description box below. This is a brief study, but if you'll go deeper, take it seriously, God can use these few moments to transform your life. So make sure you get the study, share it with someone that you love. There are discussion questions attached to it, full details of the study. And I just wanted to whet your appetite. And we'll be back next week with part two of Lessons from Betrayal. Before I go, I want to pray with you. Because I know, and there have been times in my life where I felt betrayed. And I felt like it was the end of so many different things. But here's what I discovered. And here's what I want to share with you in this little short, 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 short mini-series. And that is this that there are lessons that come from betrayal. There are also blessings that come from betrayal. And God has a plan for your life. God will never lead you where God can't feed you. God will never guide you where God can't provide you. And nothing catches God off guard. I want to pray for you right now. Maybe you're dealing with some pain in your life, disappointment, betrayal. Maybe you feel derailed. Maybe you feel let down. But there is a God who sees all and knows all and wants to give you lessons from your moments of betrayal and blessings from your moment of betrayal. Can I pray with you? Let's pray. Father, I thank you so much for my friend who is watching right now. You know their heart. You know the pain. You know the suffering. You know the agony that they've experienced. God, when we're let down, it feels like our whole world is shutting down. But thank you that even in our misery, you're still our master. Even in our difficulty, you're the God who saves us from disaster. So thank you, Father, through it all, for whatever it is that you're trying to show us, for whatever it is that you're trying to bring awareness to, even those imperfections within us. Reveal yourself loud, live, and strong. Live in us, live through us, and help us to live through moments of betrayal. And we thank you now for your forgiveness. Help us to forgive. Help us to be delivered from guilt and from anything that's not like you. And for it all, we give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for letting me pray with you. I'm going to continue to pray for you. But here's what I want you to do for me. I want you to like, share. If you have not done so already, subscribe to the channel. That way you'll be notified every time new content is loaded and get that PDF. It's right down there in the description box waiting for you. It's free, no strings attached. Get it, print it, type on it, do whatever you want to do. Share it with somebody who needs to hear God's word for their life concerning moments of pain. Hey, I love bringing this to you. I pray that you got something out of this study. And until next time, you've been watching the Midweek Refill with Bishop Littman. Don't forget to tune in right here every Sunday morning, 9.30 a.m. live, or catch the replay anytime you want. And until next time, this is Bishop Littman with the Midweek Refill, Senior Pastor of New Mountain Top Church. You go with God.